Hey guys, you're watching Explore the Weird. If you're into creepy and weird, Goon Gang already smoked the like button. Please, please consider joining the Ganja Goons Gang. We are growing exponentially. We are taking over all reaction channels. We are going to be the community and the largest community. So be strong with us, grow with the Goon Gang, and become one today. Oh, Teddy, how do I become one? Tell me. Tell me how to become a goon. Just interact with the video. Next time you see me on the thumbnail, press the thumbnail. Give YouTube algorithm knowledge that you tell the algorithm what you like. And the algorithm doesn't recommend random stuff to you. The algorithm knows, hey, this guy or this gal or this person loves this content by Teddy Ganja. All right, guys, we are going to get right into it. As I said, this channel is just now. My wife sends me videos. I react to them. If I run out, we'll watch other videos. Currently, I still haven't ran out. She just keeps sending more and more and more and more. All right, let's get right into it. And they came up with this incredible document where they actually said we need a new justification for this all-powerful state. So the new excuse is going to be because the environment is going to be harmed and because climate is going to hurt us. Wait, what? I could not believe what I just heard. Did world leaders really lay out this globalist plan in plain English in a physical book way back in 1991? I went on Amazon and there it was, the first global revolution, which states, and I quote, in searching for a common enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like would fit the bill. And therefore the real enemy is humanity itself. What the heck? What the heck? One common enemy. That's always been like something. What? What is it like? Some guy even said uh, Reagan had one time said that in some crazy speech or something about, oh, if we get all the governments together, if we have one common enemy, that's going to be what unites us or something. I don't know. Maybe that's it. I, I snopes it. Snopes it. I'm not sure if that's real, actually. Uh, but yes, this could be because I've even heard of the water famines uh, being the potential thing or or some um enemy that we all uh come together to fight such as an extraterrestrial uh event potentially uh maybe with holographic projectors yo we've been down this rabbit hole many many times and i gotta say yeah potentially this is uh interesting <laughs> potentially this is interesting teddy what are you trying to say so if you think this is going to be no big deal you're absolutely wrong the reason they're going to create this panic is to force us to our knees, to make us so uncomfortable and panic that we'll say, yes, we'll take the digital, just get the money turned back on so life can go back to normal. That's what the whole shutdown is for. And of course, they're going to blame it on the bankers. These evil bankers came in and stole your money. They're just doing, the bankers are just doing what they're told. Okay? So, but they have to create the crisis so they can ride in and save the day. So they shut down the money on a Friday. Within three weeks to three months, I don't think it'll take three months because we're so soft here. We're not used to hardship and doing without here. We're used to just running to the store anytime we need something. So once they shut all that off and people are out of money and people are starting to starve, most people will just give in willingly, quick. So I don't think it's gonna take three months. I think three to maybe six weeks tops, but I would prepare for three months if I was you. Wait, did I miss something? Like, for what? Three months to prepare for the recovery of the system? Or So basically, he's like, okay, the money uh, is going to stop. And if the money stops, it takes three weeks to three months to bring it back? Is that what he's trying to say? I'm kind of confused. I feel like I caught a snippet of this. This is a weird snippet. This is a weird snippet. So if the goal is financial freedom... And you're at the end times and uh, going through all these famines and stuff. Does money even matter um, at that point? You know? What the heck are you trying to tell me, sir? If I'm at the end of everything, then it don't really matter to me. Right? At that point, do you really care? And then he said digital. Like, oh, it has to be digital. We're going to convert. Like, why would we convert to digital if we're like at the end of a famine and stuff did i miss something here what is going on oh my god these videos are just weird 
Let me know in the comments down below. Did, did I miss something? What is he trying to tell me? Let me know. Let me know, goons, that Teddy needs your help. Oh, Teddy. Oh, Teddy. I heard of this radio station called Coast to Coast. Yep. This guy, he always interviews the craziest of people. He calls in. He's like, I don't really tell people this story because I don't even know if I believe it. But he's like, this is what happened to me. This guy collects like motorcycles and he has two motorcycles in particular that he like loves. He told his daughter, when I die, please keep these two motorcycles within the family. One of them was like some Honda from like 1970. Anyways, he like drove it to the coffee shop. This guy comes in. He's like, hey, who has the Honda whatever? He's like, yeah, it's mine. He's like, I have one just like that. Weird. They just started talking. And he's like, what other bikes do you have? He like mentioned the other one. Like, no way. I have that bike as well. It was passed down from my grandpa. No way. And he's like, like, weird and then he started to cry he's like i'm sorry can i hug you and the guy's like uh yeah sure and then the kid whispers in his ear in october do not go to alaska the guy's like i do travel to alaska at least six times a year and he's like that's all i need to say and then he left he's like this is really weird and so it goes out and he said saw a flash he couldn't find the kid so he's kind of convinced that it was his grandson time somehow traveling. time traveling what in the world yeah <laughs> What is happening? Dude, I have so much goosebumps right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. My hair is just straight up. That that story freaked me out a little bit. Same motorcycles. I ride motorcycles. Imagine that. You have like a future or past self like come or family member come up to you and you have a conversation like this. Dude, that is crazy. That is crazy. And then like he even tells you like, yo, stay away from this place. Like man tell me some inside secrets like bro like oh invest in amazon and costco those are gonna be the next two things that take over everything walmart gets bought out by costco teddy oh boy oh boy <laughs> no one can beat that wholesale price <laughs> oh boy and then costco teams up with amazon and amazon and <laughs> no, i'm just kidding. i'm we're gonna keep it going we're gonna keep it going right well i was involved with building a project uh helped with um implementing a, a a vaccine payment system for our providers. It's called um, a pay per dose system. So it means that every time someone gets vaccinated, they get um, they get a payment for it as a provider. And um, I helped build it. I implemented it. Um, and when I was looking at the data, which is part of my job, I noticed some discrepancies with the dates um, of death people getting, people dying within a week of being vaccinated. So what did you notice when you first started to look at this data as you were building it? Well, as soon as the system went live, we noticed that um, people were dying almost straight away after being injected. So that sort of prompted my curiosity a bit. And um, so I, I dug a little deeper and I am a scientist by nature. I, I love science. It's my all-time favorite i've got a i've got a master's degree in science so uh, nobody, potentially nobody knows this data nobody but me in new zealand has seen this data now i'm giving it to the world explain why explain that because it's a, it's a payment system and i'm the database administrator for it i'm the only one because new zealand is a small country you can get away with one database administrator to do this so I'm in a unique position in the world. And because New Zealand is a tier one country with really good IT, um, I was able to manage and build the system and as be the only database administrator needed to look after it. In other countries like America or Britain, um, you'd need a whole team of people. So it would be very difficult for one person to get access to all of this information. But in New Zealand, because of the size, and because it's got really good IT, I happen to be the, the one. A lot of people want to know, what was my batch? What can you do to help Kiwis yes. with that? Okay, so what I did with the data was um, look at the top 10 um, batches that were had a high death count, a high mortality rate. And I put them on a chart, um, which you can see up there. So it's got a, a batch ID, which is our internal um number for a batch but you can easily get the Pfizer batch ID from that it shouldn't be too difficult tell us more about that because a lot of people will say hey that's only the top 10 I want to know my batch what would you advise yep you can do that there's a, um, there's a website find my batch for the whole world that can actually find that um, and I, we can list this on um, a website 
the whole number of batches. There are 119 individual batches so far in New Zealand, 119. Of the Pfizer? Of the Pfizer. Actually, no, of all of them, because we have we have Moderna, we have AstraZeneca, but they're only few and far between. Mostly it's Pfizer. Mostly it's Pfizer in New Zealand. So people can find that? Yeah. Find my batch? Yes, they should we'll be able details. to, yes. Hello. So what I did was our internal batch ID, I counted the number of vaccinated within that batch, and then I found out who was dead. Wow, let's have a look. And so we then look at the percentage of the ratio. So do we know if these are all Pfizer, the top 10? Yes, they are. And this is Pfizer's batch number one. We've had yeah. 711 from batch number one vaccinated. 152 of those died, which makes a 21% percent death, death rate, mortality rate. From that mortality rate. Batch. They are high. Now, there are different ways to look at the data. You can slice it and dice it. So in other words, are the vaccinators themselves, um, what are they doing? Are we looking at some who have got a higher mortality rate than others. And sure enough, if we look at the next one, unfortunately there are. So what we have here are the top 10 vaccinators who have the highest ratios of mortality. For privacy reasons, we have redacted the names of those jabbed and the names of those jabbing. To. We have, yeah. We have so we've just because, called it vaccinator one. Yeah, but these are individuals. These are real people. These are real numbers. This is government data. So the top V1 has vaccinated 246 people and 60 of them are now no longer with us. And that is nearly 25%. One in four, nearly one in four that that person vaccinated is now dead. And you can come up with any number of reasons for it, but the, this this should never happen. This should never happen. If if they were all doing their job correctly, if it was a, a normal vaccine, it would be 0.75. And if you were arguing, okay, there was one vaccinator who was incompetent, not doing the job properly, that's an aberration. But look at the other numbers. Yeah. So it looks then we start to say, what is it they were putting into people's bodies? Because the uniformity is what they were putting in. Look at this one, yeah. 621 by vaccinator, the third highest yeah. vaccinator, 621, 104 people dead, nearly 17% of the people they jabbed. Yeah. And unless they, they go around um, terminally ill cancer wards, and injecting people um, who they know are gonna die, then there is no other explanation for this dead. And why would they be doing that anyway? You know, it doesn't make any sense. The vaccine is meant to protect those people. On the left there, the big red line, is the Christchurch earthquake event. So that is the outlier, and that's a, a lot of people died on that day. From there, the next line where you get more than 120 people dying, is sometime 2012. Then you get nothing for a year. 2013 doesn't have any. 2014, you got a couple. Then nothing. 2016, you got one. Then nothing until 2018, where you get a whole bunch, a whole cluster. That's probably due to a flu epidemic because all these, these spikes that you see, these black lines previously on the left-hand side, they're all due to the winter flu season. So you've got to remember that they all, all these deaths happening June, July, August. So there in 2018, we had a, a big flu epidemic. Moving on to the right, you get another one. Then the next red one, the Christchurch massacre, which was in 2019 in March. But from that, you get a, a cluster in 2020, a whole bunch there. May have been another bad flu season. We don't know. But then from 2021, midway, you see a black line there appearing. 
And then it's like a flick of a switch. Suddenly, the black lines get closer together and there's more of them. Very thick black lines there. So this, this one here, peak deaths with COVID, with or from COVID, but then the deaths from COVID, if you look at the Worldometer website, it correlates to that. That is the same time. And they say that over 60 people died with or from COVID. Then after that, it suddenly, suddenly drops off. So after that, you only get a couple of people a day dying with or from COVID. So if you, if you go back to the chart there, in that case, you would, you would expect to see the black lines disappear because no one's dying from COVID anymore, right? But you're not. You're absolutely not. You see in the black lines, there are more people dying than ever before. These are the, the biggest number of deaths we've seen in history of New Zealand. The death rate has gone up 6%, 8% year on year. Even after COVID wasn't a thing, the death rate is still going up. And that's illustrated here by these black lines, which are still going on. People die every day. People die every day. Guys, there is a lot of things happening here, and I'm not discrediting what this person believes as a database administrator. I come from the IT consulting world. I do AWS consulting, and I got to say, it is hilarious to me as a technical person looking into this person who is a database administrator, a single database administrator for a country, right, that gets access to data like this. This is not uh, anything that is... Um, crazy uh, like one database administrator versus teams there's no uh requirement that hey in order to see this amount of data you need one guy or you need a team of guys there's nothing like that if you have a database and, and it's full of data that he's showing in like you know word table or powerpoint tables where it's like percent of deaths uh versus how many people got vaccinated uh and the vaccinators who administered those vaccines and uh, how many of those people died that got administered that vaccine? I'm not discrediting those people didn't die. But at the end of this, he shows, hey, uh, when COVID first happens, look at the amount of deaths that originally started with, with COVID. And as uh, the vaccines rolled out, it tapered off and then it got uh, large again. It, maybe there's another variant of COVID. You know, the conclusions this guy jumps to is not his fault. He's only as knowledgeable in what he knows. And I think what he knows is database administration, and that is creation, deletion uh, of databases and tables. Uh, what he's doing now is he's playing something called a data scientist. He's trying to understand the data, dig into it. And a database administrator has no uh, presence in the data scientist world a data scientist builds reports he looks uh, they look at the data they literally uh, do the correlations and they use like algorithms in order to come up with the correlations here it's like i don't know why they died but you know they died we're gonna put it in there and i we kept track that this citizen in new zealand died at this time it seems wild to me i look at it from an outside perspective uh as an it guy and i'm like dude how does a dba database administrator go to a data scientist go to hey look what i found from the vaccine it's all bro science i figured it out i figured it out i'm the database guy i'm the one guy and i'm i'm trying to look at this with with open eyes but it is so hard to trust this guy um from new zealand unfortunately uh i come from a state where many many people have been vaccinated i would say my state is like 80 percent vaccinated really high up there people aren't dying you know out of four people he was saying one was dying out of like all the time like no way people die all the time but i'm not seeing any higher significance um significant rate in the death increases so i believe he believes what he's seen and he's correlated some stuff in his head and came out with some numbers that are scary but without a true data scientist, a true expert in the field to validate this data, it is so hard for me to trust the DBA. And especially a guy that has no one else to back up. It's like, I'm the one single guy. Trust my science, boys. <laughs> All right. All right. Interesting.
you'll be fine don't worry you know your own health you'll be fine vaccinated goons you'll be fine don't worry. Human settlement zones. They want this kind of in by 2050, 2060, and it's the world of the Hunger Games. This is in their bloody documents. They want to pack people together in high rise, basically prison cell sized living space. So all the people, those that they don't want to cull, are in one place and they've cleared the land of everything else, straight off the pages of Hunger Games, that is. This is Michael Bloomberg, mayor of New York, massive insider in all this and front man. And he has just announced the first phase of Agenda 21, he doesn't call it that of course, building of 165,000 units in New York. The space that these apartments will cover for each person uh, or family is between these two yellow lines. They are 10 feet by 30 bloody feet. Classic Agenda 21. Building regulations are being changed in places like California to reduce the amount of land that is used to build buildings. By 2020, this directive of the European Union says that all new building must use nearly zero energy by 2020. And that means massive changes in the structure and nature of human society and living space. This is the Archon world of these Archon bloodlines that I talked about. No creativity. Humans have creativity. They have to use human creativity. They don't have it. And here, look at that. Here are some of the bloody houses that they are talking about for people under Agenda 21. Talk about bloody uninspired. They flat out look like shipping containers. That was a shipping container transformed into a house. Don't get me wrong. But yes, this is a true uh, epidemic. You know, population size increases. We're not making new uh, developmental uh, decisions in new suburban areas, you know, and you still have such a need for the populace to continue to build into a city and you can only expand as far as you can. These are the things that are going to happen. You're going to start stacking uh, houses on top of each other. You know, I think this is pretty much expected. Now, the term that he's trying to throw is, you know, hey, it's a prison and you're enslaving people into these uh, containers. And, then, you know, uh, I have a few friends that live in New York City uh, as well as the Bronx, you know, and I got to say. I gotta say, looking at how big their uh, apartment is and how much they pay, if this is somehow cheaper and we can get people in, because I think even a 10 foot by 20, oh man, that's that's a lot of square feet. Well, how expensive will this be? You know, I, that's what it comes down to. Let's get people housing. Let's get people into homes. I don't want I don't want to see homeless around. So let's see. I'm I'm down with this. I I don't see the issue. I guess. What the hell? What the hell? The entire lower 48 is about to experience extreme weather. That new headline is from the Washington Post. The Post then states, U.S. weather is about to go crazy from tornadoes to blizzards to massive waves. For almost everyone in the contiguous United States to see wild weather in the same week is extraordinary and it's about to happen. Correction, it is happening. Question, did the global climate engineering cabal get the go-ahead to double down on climate engineering at the latest global climate conference just held in Dubai, COP28, the climate conference whose president was the CEO of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company? How's that for a conflict of interest? Chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding is a core component of flash freeze engineered winter weather mayhem. On that note, the following is an excerpt from a pending weather modification patent. 3D reduced graphene oxide SiO2 composite for ice nucleation. The present invention relates to the field of cloud seeding to synthesis of 3D graphene metal oxide nanostructured composites for ice nucleation and cloud seeding, artificial snow making, and freeze drying techniques in biomedicine. Are you okay with graphene snow? Because I'm not. For the record, nearly all of 100 recent precipitation tests by an international agricultural institution working directly with geoengineeringwatch.org contain graphene. Imagine that. Is graphene now being dispersed on top of all other known climate engineering chemical ice nucleation contamination like aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, polymer fibers, and surfactants? Totally toxic snow. How wonderful. And you know what's crazy? Every time it snows, especially where I am, they people always go out and they light the snow on fire. They're like, oh, Teddy, look, the snow light's on fire. And we have a bunch of scientists go, yeah, you know, it's all explainable. Water can be lit on fire for these reasons. And then I go, wait a second. it's a, And now this guy's talking about weaponizing the winter weather and graphene snow and stuff. I'm like, wait, what the hell? What the hell? You know, it's like, what the, what are you supposed to do? What can you do? They've already got it in there. New Hampshire's like, hey, we're going to ban chemtrails in our area. But, like, dude, it's the air. 
you know, I'm pretty sure the borders is going to seep into your, uh, into your state there, but, you know, quite interesting. Quite interesting. Let's see what happens. I'm ready. I'm ready. And, you know, there are bands of weathers where multiple states get the same type of weather. I know Texas has been experiencing uh, snow randomly here and there. So, yeah, this is... Uh, an interesting thought indeed. Interesting thought indeed. And 2024 just started. Oh boy, this is going to be the year they let us know everything. Teddy, you're going to be woke. They're going to tell us about the Greys. I'm ready, boys. I'm ready. Tell me everything. Is, uh, what is it? Like, uh, are we really full, have full control of, uh, the weather? Can we make rain and sun? uh days for people and stuff like you know rainy days and sunny days i i, I wonder i start to wonder wait what is kfc chicken 3d printed the chicken chain has partnered with 3d bioprinting solutions to create a chicken nugget which in a lab with chicken and plant cells using bioprinting you know i love kfc don't do this to me but in the end if i'm eating pink slime anyway and now the pink slime is being used to print but it's still the same slime and there's no issues with it uh, i guess the thing is we've also read hey the foods are trying to kill us if the foods are trying to kill us and uh, the thing is, they're trying to push the agenda of, uh, you know, dumbing us down through the food or making us uh, reduce our reproduction rates through the food. This could be one of the things. Once made in the lab, you don't know what's in that slime. You don't know. They're just using... That's their ink, Teddy. But that is where the world is headed to. Soon we're going to start printing our own foods. That's the future. That's where we need to be. I don't need to be waiting for everything, whatever I want. I press a few buttons, boom, it's printed, I can eat it. Could be healthy, who knows? Maybe that's how we beat the obesity problem. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Interesting. Guys, I'm sure it's nothing, bro. <laughs> this is the snow that I melted today. And then I put a big magnet on the outside of this glass. I'm just rolling the magnet around the glass. That's what I'm doing. Magnet. Glass. That's pretty creepy. Anyone guess why we have that in our water? Let's see. Let's see what we can do over here. Oh, nice. It's great. Hmm. Hmm. Very weird. Guys, I mean, depending on where she got the samples, she could have gotten some outside contaminants in, like dirt or tar from the road. So very skeptical there because I have myself watched ice melt. I know, Teddy, what the hell? You have nothing better to do? Sometimes, you know, it's the little things and watching ice melt, watching the condensation form on the cup uh, is sometimes, you know, it's the little things. Teddy, you already said that. Come on now. It's the little things, damn it. <laughs> All right. So, um, yes, I, I personally, I've even gone crazier. I'll, I'll grab snow and like throw like maple syrup on it and eat it and stuff. Uh, but like, you know, I've seen snow melt and I've never had outside products like black, you know, magnetic vibes but i've never thrown a magnet at it but i can't even see um something that looks dirty uh when that snow does melt so i'm very skeptical in believing it but maybe colorado snow be hidden different you know they be smoking that like button hard over there and it's all up in the air and now those uh metals from that like are are in the snow oh boy oh boy all right we're gonna do just one more just one more
Wait, why was Trump there on the last one? Checkmate. What the hell? What the hell? Um, I am not sure. There's a lot of speculation here. So it, to me, it appeared like everyone got an envelope in their little uh, funeral um, pamphlet, if you will. And I guess when they read it, maybe they got emotional. But what was interesting is when they were carrying the casket, George W. Bush is definitely being all emotional. But at the time, the wife, uh, Laura, Barbara, Laura, damn it, I forget her name now. I used to know it. Oh, my God, I'm, that's going to kill me. What, 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 uh, regardless, regardless, uh, I, you know, she wasn't paying attention to the casket she's looking down at the note that is like in her mind she's like this is priority like what's on this paper but i couldn't tell if the paper she was looking at originated from the envelope or if it was um a different paper from the funeral pamphlet or something but regardless regardless this is crazy what was in the envelope now i want to know oh my god do you guys know if you know can you let us goons know and by the way we are at the end we made it. You guys have gooned with me all the way till the end. Oh my God. Round of applause. I appreciate you guys. You guys don't know how much my wife and I appreciate the love we get from the goons. Um, literally, it has been uh, a crazy ride continuing on with all these reactions. I continue to do this uh, even through sickness. I'm here for you guys. So we'll see. We'll keep this going. We'll... Uh, take this all the way through all the way through we're going to the top we're gonna take over everything all the communities are gonna turn into goons you'll see i'm taking over we're all taking over goons strong together all right guys i'm out of here stay strong stay safe and goodbye